Plaza Games, where we bring you weekly gaming news. And uh, today, I'm only with my brother from another mother, Brian. What's going on, brother? What's up? What's up? How are you guys doing today? Good, good, man. Hey, um, so what's new, man? I know we did a podcast yesterday. How was your day, man? Um, podcast yesterday was good. Everything from up to today been really just winded down with work and everything. I was really excited to get this one done today, and I do have some uh, interesting news to go ahead and share with everybody else. Yeah, I'm excited too, man. I know we couldn't, uh, we were supposed to get this out on Wednesday, so we apologize about that. You know, life happens, but uh, we still got it out, you know, for this week. And, um, but, anyways, without further ado, we do have five stories for you today. Uh, we have some PlayStation news, we got some GameStop news. Um, Brian's going to come with some Overwatch news and um, some, what, what was that game you wanted to talk about? Um, Ghostwire Tokyo, right? Yep. Yep. And I think we're going to round it out with uh, some Steam Deck news. So, But with that being said, we will let me adjust my camera here a little bit. There we go. That's a little bit better. Um, with We're going to start with story number one. The first story comes from Polygon. Uh, Nicole, Nicole Carpenter writes, PlayStation being sued for gender discrimination. What's new in the gaming world, right? Um, she writes, eight more women allege sexual harassment and discrimination at PlayStation maker Sony. Um, eight former and current Sony Interactive Entertainment employees have accused the PlayStation maker of sexism, according to, according to court documents filed Tuesday. Former security, security analyst Emma Majo filed a lawsuit against Sony for gender discrimination and wrongful termination in November 2021. Majo is seeking class action status to include other employees impacted by sexism at the company. Sony filed to dismiss the complaint citing a lack of specifics that prove widespread intentional discrimination. On Tuesday, Majo's lawyer filed statements of support from seven former PlayStation workers and one current employee. These women provided written statements of support detailing instances of sexism at the company and across multiple offices in the United States. The allegations described in these documents ranged from devaluing women's ideas and discrimination toward mothers uh, and discrimination toward mothers to sexual harassment and systemic struggles for women to get promoted. Um, lastly, Harrington also said men at Sony would rank female employees by their hotness and pass around filthy jokes and images of women. She also described an instance where an engineer asked her not to wear skirts to work because it was distracting him. So, Brian, you know, gaming these days, super bad rap. Um, you know, there's so many companies going through this, you know, um, sexism and harassment and so many companies being sued. One big one, which I know you're going to talk about later, is um, Activision Blizzard, where, you know, Bobby yeah. Bob, Bobby Kotick or Kodak, um, you know, piece of crap guy, unfortunately, for that company, one of the biggest companies in the world that just got bought out by Xbox. And unfortunately, he's still the CEO of it. But how, what do yeah. you think about this, uh, you know, PlayStation now being sued for pretty much the same thing that they were, you know, pointing the finger at? to everybody else saying, hey, you know, you can't do this. We're we're all inclusive and yada, yada, yada. Yeah, it's it's really sad to know that, you know, this this kind of stuff is still going on. Um, and this type of community, it's something that you really um, don't like to happen because this is, the gaming community is a family community. Um, you know, this is how you interact with people. This is how you get to know a lot of people. One of my best friends I found from the gaming community um, knowing that this kind of stuff is happening um, and that it's been going on for so long, it, it's sad. It sucks. Um, and unfortunately, um, you know, it, 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 it has to it has to stop. And it unfortunately, it ruins a lot of people's lives um, and it ruins things for people. Um, so, I mean, hearing like I said, hearing that this is still going on, it's it's sad. Um and I, I hope that down the line things do get done about it. Yeah, no, I agree 100%. It's, um, it's amazing that we're still going through this, right? Like, it is literally 2022, and we still deal with, you know, sexual harassment in the workplace. We still deal with racism. We still deal with so many things in, at a time where you would feel like everyone and everything should be inclusive, you know? And um, the fact that now, it's not saying that it's necessarily being people at PlayStation that are right. you know, doing these heinous things, but um, Sony in general. So, you know, when when the 
news came out of Blizzard Activision. That was the big one. You know, obviously Ubisoft is going through things themselves. Uh, there's, I mean, almost every company you can think of, there's some type of lawsuit for sexual harassment, sexual discrimination, so on and so forth. But when the whole Activision Sony thing came out, I mean, not Activision Sony, uh, Blizzard, you know, that is literally the biggest company. You know, they may call it duty. Enough said. You know, they, they rack in billions every year. Call of Duty is always the number one selling game. And, you know, you have this CEO who is a piece of crap to, you know, put it frank. And he is denying all the allegations. He doesn't seem to really care. He's trying to protect the people who actually did the harassing. And it's it's a shame, you know. And, oh, yeah. you know, the, the industry as a whole is like you know f bobby kodak or kodak or whatever his name is it doesn't even matter what his name is but you know you look at him and you, you can just see it man this guy is just a uh, a piece of crap he's you know doesn't care about inclusion he only cares about making that you know you know that money essentially money in his pocket um people have been calling for his resignation and he hasn't resigned now that microsoft has acquired them i believe once the acquisition goes through in 2023 he's gone like he's done as the ceo but um, so that'll be good for the you know industry as a whole. But you know, for Sony, I remember when this happened. Um, I know the president and CEO of, of PlayStation said, you know, this can't be happening in our industry. We have to be better about this. Everybody should be inclusive. And yeah, I mean, growing up, you always thought this was a male-driven industry, and you know, girls don't play games. Well, times have changed, man. You know what I mean? Like. I know so many girls that play games. I mean, our sister alone, she's probably beaten more games than I have in, you know, the last three to five years. So it's 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 amazing that, you know, a lot of these bright young women are probably saying, I don't want to go into that industry because of the crap that's going on right now. Um, mm -hmm. But then, again, like I said, for PlayStation to go out there and say, you know, this can't happen. And then for Sony, their parent company now to be going through the same thing is very contradictory. So. You know, hopefully it changes. Um, you know, it's a shame that, you know, a woman can't walk around or women can't walk around their workplace and feel safe and secure, you know. But, right. Um, you know, it, it, the article also says that, you know, there was instances where um, there's an instance where an engineer asked her, oh, well, I told you about the not wearing a skirt, but because it was distracting him and then alleged that male engineers went to strip clubs during lunch and shared porn and another incident harrington said she requested a private lactation room after having twins in 2005 she was required to use a storage room like literally she was required to use a closet you know what i mean uh, which is ridiculous and um you know the storage room with a broken lock directly off the entrance lobby harrington wrote she stopped breastfeeding early because it was not sustainable under those conditions and really no one should have to go through that it really shouldn't you know us as men unfortunately right. fortunately you know us as men we don't have to go through not even a minute amount of things that women do you know especially after having kids and things like that so hopefully you know um the the industry can clean up because sometimes it's hard you know to support some of these companies i know there's a lot of industry insiders that they they said they're not buying activision blizzard games they're not going to play call of duty you know they're not going to support them until something happens and you know what kudos to them man you know i'm, right. I'm all off i'm all for it so um any other thoughts on that story no i don't really have any other thoughts i will be going a little bit um towards that side when i do get on um, my story so i do have some things to say about that as well okay well moving on to story number two um Former Nintendo of America president Reggie fils me has shared new light on his surprise exit from GameStop board of directors. Now, I'm not sure if any of you have known this, but after Reggie fils me retired from Nintendo as the uh, president of the North American operations, he actually joined the board um, of directors for GameStop. Now, you know, GameStop's a joke. Let's, let's be honest. You know what I mean? I, I don't remember the last thing I bought from there. Usually I walk in and go straight to clearance see what i can find and go from there but um he was part of the board of directors and then abruptly resigned so he finally yeah. shared some light on why he left um he was he said in an interview at sxsw that it came down to being locked out of conversations about how to turn the ship around again gamestop a failing company uh 
Before explaining why he left, uh, Fiza Me discussed why he joined in the first place. After leaving Nintendo, Fiza Me joined GameStop's board of directors in April 2020. At the onset of the pandemic, and with some thinking, I'm sorry, and with some thinking, GameStop would go bankrupt before the launch of the PlayStation 5 and Series X and S. He explained that at the time he believed GameStop had the potential to be successful if its management took the right steps and had an action plan. He said, quote, I believe that the company could be successful. I believe that with taking the right action that certainly the company would exist in a time for the launch of the new systems. And a company that services the core gaming audience the way they do would be able to have a successful future. End quote. Um, fils me said GameStop needed to pivot in a number of ways, including ramping up its e-commerce portfolio and services and generally finding ways to better satisfy its customer base. The PS5 and Series XS released in November 2021 and GameStop remained solvent as fils me said the retailer was able to maximize its riches from those systems and the more profit-driven games sold for them. The biggest issue was that as a strategy, strategy, sorry, strategy was beginning to develop, I can't speak, um, I asked to be a part of the new team to develop the strategy. I knew the business, I knew it I knew it as a consumer, I knew it as a vendor. I had pretty strong opinions on how the business needed to be pivoted, but I was rebuffed, fils me said. The perspective was, Reggie, we want to keep the team small, so it's going to be myself and a few of the people I brought on board. Um, at this point, fils me flat out said Cohen and the team around him don't know the business, don't understand the players, and once he was denied a spot on the strategy team, he said it was time for him to go. If this is if this isn't GameStop to the T, you know, can't get out their own right. way. It's it's amazing. Uh, you know, I I'm not. Don't get me wrong. I I don't want GameStop to go away. You know, I'm huge about physical media. I mean, you've seen my collection of video games, retro games. Yeah. Unfortunately, they don't sell much of that except you know online. I know some of the bigger markets have uh, retro games in store, but you know, when you go into GameStop. Most of the time, used games cost more than new games. You know, the same game could be Call of Duty, World at War. The used game would be $25. The new one would be $15.99. Makes no sense, you know. That's always a running meme for GameStop. And you go to oh, yeah. trade something in. You pay $60 two months ago. You go to trade it in, and they'll, they'll give you $6, you know. So it's a lot of those business business practices that just don't sit well with a lot of people. Um and, and I could see why Reggie Fees and me said, hey, you know what? I don't want to be a part of this. If I can't be a part of, you know, restructuring the company, which they actually haven't, you know, they're still struggling. They're still almost on the brink of bankruptcy. Um, you know, I'm gone. So uh, what, what do you think about this? Um, I don't know. Just like you, I, I really don't want GameStop to uh, disappear, um, even though I really I, I don't go to GameStop much. I do. uh like just press play a lot better yeah, yeah um but physical media i'm also a big fan of that i don't really like getting things digital that's why i do um get most when the new consoles come out i get the physical copies um i just i feel like maybe later down the line they're gonna have a lot of value um opposed to digital games because you can't really you can't resell digital games um but um i mean hopefully like with everything else this thing does get sorted out um <clears throat> that they get, you know, the the things that that are coming to them for doing what they're doing, um, and that then the community would get a little bit better, uh, based off of how things change, um, and makes our experiences a lot better. No, yeah, I agree a hundred percent. Just press play. If a lot of you don't know, that's a local gaming shop where we live. They actually have like maybe five locations now, and man, I tell you what, you walk in there, especially for someone like myself, it's like you know Disney World they have all the retro collections they have all the retro games yep. consoles they have the new games and consoles and man it's so hard to walk in there and not leave with something you know um, I'm a huge collector of retro games um, and uh, you know it's something that it's unfortunately right now the market for retro games is so high that it's hard to walk into a place like Just Press Play and you know buy a, a game that I paid $15 for just three years ago, now $65. Yep. But that's beside, that's beside the point. You know, walking into Just Press Play, I love it. Walking into GameStop, I'm like, oh, man, it's crazy. 
Um, but yeah, I, I don't want GameStop to go away. You know, I like going in there. Sometimes I find a Funko Pop I want that I can't find nowhere else. Or now they're carrying PC stuff, which I just start, started getting into PC. You know, to start this podcast, and you know, yeah. it, it's still nice to walk in there every now and then. And I actually bought my Halo uh, Elite controller there because I couldn't find it anywhere else, but they had it, so I bought it there. But you know, hopefully they can turn things around, and um, you know, we'll see a better GameStop in the future. Um, but we are on the Twitch set, and Amy Chibi asked. Um, have you watched the trailer for Hogwarts Legacy that came out today? I did not. Um, I have heard some things about it, um, but I've really only seen the very little bit of what they've shown yeah. on some trailers. Um, I was at work today, so I didn't really stop and get the chance yeah. to um, take a look at it. Um, but from what I know, this takes... Uh, Hogwarts Legacy takes place, I believe, 500 years before Harry Potter. Okay. Um, so this is like, you know, way, way back, I guess, I mean, like the beginning of Hogwarts and stuff like that. Um, so that's definitely a really interesting take on things. Are you a fan of um, Harry Potter at all? Uh, I played, uh, I think it was The Prisoner of Azkaban, I think, on the GameCube when I was like 10 and the Dementors uh, scared the living crap out of me and I have not touched <laughs> a Harry Potter's game since. Um, so being a fan, no. Will I get it? Probably not. <coughs> yeah, I'm in the same boat. Um, so we actually have it up now um, playing as we're speaking and Amy Chibi said it actually takes place in the late 1800s, like the 1890s, so no known characters. And so it, it actually lets the game be its own thing. Um, yeah. It's basically going to be the definitive Harry Potter experience in a video, video game. Um, personally, I've never watched even one movie of the Harry Potters. You know, any of the Harry Potter. I haven't read any of the books. Um, it is something that it's funny because I was talking to my wife and I was like, we should just watch them all. You know, we always, we're always looking for trilogies to watch and stuff like that. And I'm so down to watch them. Unfortunately... And this goes back to kind of like the not necessarily sexual harassment, but let's talk about J.K. Rollins. You know, have you heard the story, the news around her? You know, yeah, I, I've heard a lot of things it's, around her. It's some another, of the things that go ahead, it I'm was sorry. really weird with her. No, so some of the things like around her were really, really weird, and the way that she was describing some of the characters and their sexualities, like everything seemed yeah. to just change out of nowhere. It was so weird. Yeah, she's another person that's like man you know you realize you're living in 2022 right like you don't have to agree with everything that's going on in this world but to blatantly go out and say things about you know transgender people and gay people that is very malicious you know it's hard for me to back someone like that so for me it's 100%. like do i really want to watch these harry potter movies i'm not missing anything if i don't watch them you know what i mean but i also feel like I'm supporting this person that I honestly think is a, a bad person. I, I, not necessarily like, I, I can't say she's a bad person, but man, her ideals just don't align with a lot of people and she's being very nasty about it. That's the problem, you know? And, um, you know, she just made a lot of comments about transgender people. So I'm not sure I can get behind this game either. And it looks great because I'm watching the some of the trailer now um, mm -hmm. on YouTube from the State of Play and, you know, it looks great. It looks amazing. But again, do I, can I back that up? You know. But also, am I going to con contradict myself and go play Call of Duty? <laughs> you know what I mean. Right. So yeah, exactly. it's like, you know, you still, I still want to support the developers because the developers have absolutely nothing to do with what J.K. Rollins said. So that's right. hundreds of people who are making this game that looks amazing, and you know, it's it's like a double edged sword, man. I don't know if. You know, playing this game, yeah, I, I'm supporting developers. I'm supporting people that are inclusive in the community, but I'm also like supporting J.K. Rollins, who I do not agree with at all. You know, so, but yeah, I mean, thank you for that, Amy Chibi. That's actually a great um, topic you brought up there. Um, it does look great. I mean, I'm I'm watching it now, and man, I I would say, sheesh, I'm I'm tempted in playing it. You know what? Maybe I'll try it out. I don't know. It, it won't be a day one for me because it doesn't look like the type of game I like to play. Uh, right. I'm more so, you know, well, it, and it might, may be, I don't know what type of game it's going to be. I'm, you know, single player narrative. That's what I like, but I like right, linear, right. linear games is more what I like. I don't like open world too much. 
there are a few that caught my eye and that I've loved playing, like GTA, um, Assassin's Creed, but you know they're far and few between. But right. Um, anyways, next story, Brian. What is your story number three? All right. So today I'm going to be going over a little bit about Overwatch Two. Um, as we all know, uh, it's finally back in the loop of things. A lot of things happened in the Overwatch community. And nobody really knew what was going to happen with the development. Um, for a second there, Activision Blizzard just really, like, went off the rails. Um, so, uh, on March 10th, um, the Overwatch team did release a community update. Mm -hmm. uh, the message from the team was put out, and it says that um, Overwatch is evolving. And our first step towards increased communication and a consistent cadence of updates for our community... We are incredibly excited to share information about our plans for the upcoming months. We're changing our release strategy by decoupling Overwatch 2's PvP and PvE experiences from one another to get new PvP content into your hands sooner while they continue to work on PvE. If you guys don't know what PvP or PvE is, PvP is player versus player, your regular multiplayer. PvE is <coughs> players versus entity or bots. Um, now, as we all know, Jeff Kaplan, um, the big, the head honcho behind everything, he did step down. Um, he's no longer part of the Overwatch project, but the new developer um, that did come in, um, is uh, his name is Aaron Keller, I believe. He's the uh, game director. Um, like I said, the game development reached a point where we all thought it'd never be released. Most of us know why, but for the ones that don't, I'll just be going uh, real quick into it. Back in 2021, uh, the New York Times posted a story of some distressing accounts of Blizzard's culture. Um, a story written by Jay Peters on The Verge gives us some insight on these uh, allegations. One, one of them comes from a lady by the name of Shay Stein. Um, she was a former customer service employee. Um, Ms. Stein worked at Activision from 2014 to 2017 as a uh, customer service type representative. Um, she helped gamers with problems, glitches, um, and she said that she had been consistently paid less than her ex, um, who joined the company at the same time she did and did the exact same work. Um, Ms. Stein also said she had once declined drugs that her manager offered her at a party in 2014. Um, or 15, which then soured their relationship and ended up hampering her career a bit. In 2016, one of her managers messaged her on Facebook suggesting that she's into some freaky deaky stuff um, <laughs> and also asked what type of uh, porn that she watches. Wow. Uh, she had also heard some um, male colleagues joking that uh, some women only had their jobs because they performed sexual favors for the higher-ups. Um, the former vice president, Lisa Welch, shared an account also of how an executive asked her to have um, sex with him because she deserved to have some fun after her boyfriend had already died. This was weeks earlier. Um, now, those are just two of like many accusations that happened at Blizzard. Um, after the lawsuits, many Overwatch employees, they just walked out um, in protest. Others stepped down from their higher positions. Um, Overwatch was kind of quick with the response. Um, one of the few things was renaming... Oh, excuse me. Was renaming everybody's favorite cowboy. Um, his name was Jesse McCree. Yeah, I've um, heard was, about that. Yeah, he was literally <laughs> named after... Jesse McCree, who was a longtime um, staffer, Blizzard staffer, who appeared in the so-called Cosby suite in one of his pictures. Um, so then the, the company committed to no longer naming um, game characters after real employees. Um, and they went ahead and they switched our beloved cowboy's name to Cole Cassidy. Um now, his name takes a lot of inspiration after the infamous bank robber and gang leader, Butch Cassidy. Um, so it seems like now they're drawing more from, like, historical-type events for some of their characters. 
Um, yeah, I would rather look up to uh, Butch Cassidy and rob a bank and be a gangster than uh, who is it? Jesse McCree. Yeah, yeah. Jesse McCree. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. Ridiculous. McCree easily <laughs> rolls off the tongue, but I'd rather not be uh, associated right. with a Cosby Suite guy. Yeah, that's um, crazy. That Cosby so, Suite thing, man. That you know, I think about like where I work. You know, and granted, yes, it's not a huge company like Activision Blizzard, but. If right. anything like that would happen at my job, that's it. Like it's termination right away. If HR found out about it, forget it. But the fact that Activision Blizzard has a piece of shit and excuse my language, like Bobby Kotick, who is yeah. sweeping everything under the rug so that his boys and his friends can, you know, get away with this stuff, it's it, it amazes me. And the fact that he's still yep. he hasn't been fired. He hasn't resigned. Right. You know, you can tell he, he's just arrogant about it all. And I don't know if you heard the latest news. I'll let you continue here shortly. But mm -hmm. apparently there's been insider trading now. He's been, he told his boys, a few of his guys that, hey, look, we're going to get bought out by Microsoft here in about two months. So buy a crap load of stock and then unload yeah. them later. You know what I mean? And now that's being investigated. So, you know, it's, it's nuts, man. It's nuts that he's still in that company. Yeah. <clears throat> um. All right, let's see here. Um, following right after what they put out with the name change, um, the Overwatch League did release a statement um, breaking the silence regarding uh, lawsuits. Their statement was, um, and this actually did show up in game. Um, so when you logged in, um, the screen did pop up and it uh, read out for you. But it did say there is no place for discrimination, harassment, or unequal treatment of any kind. We at the Overwatch League will do everything possible to make sure that, together, we build an inclusive environment in our field of play and beyond. Inspired by the Washington Justice and Houston Outlaws, which are two teams, we will be matching and advancing the donations to these worthy causes at a local level. Um, so donations that went towards the Overwatch League and stuff like that was also kind of put towards um, what was kind of going on with everything. Um, but so far, Blizzard hasn't really gotten themselves into any more sticky situations. We hope that they well, learn from their actions. Except for this whole, you know, insider trading thing now. It's like, yeah, yeah, you know, it's aside ridiculous, from man. that. Um, it's, so, it's so me bad. personally, I'm looking forward to the release of Overwatch 2. Um, I'd love to hear what everybody else is thinking about it. And before I wrap this story up, um, the closed alpha testing has already begun for Overwatch 2. That dropped like almost immediately on March 10th. Um, so unfortunately, many of us can't test out the game mm. now. But the first PvP uh, beta will drop sometime late April for PC players only. You can sign up for that access to the first beta now at playoverwatch.com. New modes are promised. Four new maps. We're getting our first 5v5, which is different from our 6v6s. Um, we have some hero re reworks and our long-awaited hero from some of the cinematics who's been teased, um, Sojourn. She's a cybernetic type um, hero. She has like some enhancements to her body and stuff. Um, so I'm really looking forward to see what uh, where this game takes it and everything that they've been showing in the cinematics is kind of what we're going to be promised. It, it looks like a really good game so far. Um, um, when are they planning on releasing this? We don't know yet. Okay. There's still the the beta and everything kind of has its like set dates. Yeah. yeah. Um, but with everything how it's been, it's just been pushed everywhere, so we really don't know exactly when. Yeah, and the pandemic. Um, I mean, that release. throws another wrench into things. I mean, so many. It, it's almost inevitable where. Any game that's been announced and it has a date, it's going to get pushed yeah. back. You know what I mean? But, oh, yeah. you know, I'd rather games be pushed back, especially now. You know, we're getting games that are coming out for the most part. Well, not yeah. the most part, but, you know, almost every game that came out prior to the pandemic was broken. You know, there was a million patches. So now people seem to know, hey, you know, these developers are like, we can actually take our time. If we have to delay it, we delay it. And when right. it comes out, hopefully it's ready to play. You know, you don't have so many, you know, bugs and stuff like Halo. Look at Halo. That game was perfect when it came out. So, right. But um, 
there was another question. Oh, um, with Activision Blizzard, they're actually still being sued by the state of California. <laughs> so for oh, I didn't know. Yeah, that. that was like one of the biggest things you know that came out of the whole thing is the state of California is suing Activision Blizzard for all this crap that they're you know that's happening in in that company. So yeah, but no, I, I digress. Um, I don't. I don't. I don't want to. I can keep talking about the piece of crap Bobby Kotick, but no need. <laughs> yeah. All right, so now on to my second story. This one's going to be pretty short um, since I did, you know, speak quite a bit on Overwatch here. Um, but we do have a new game dropping in the next seven days. Uh, on March 25th, Ghostwire Tokyo is releasing. It is a PS5 and Microsoft exclusive. So sorry, Xbox owners. You guys are going to have to wait a whole year before you can get this. Um, you know... I mean, I guess you could say, yay, waiting a year is fine, but right. we get it first. Yeah, I get to play it first. <laughs> the um, only thing is, if it goes on Xbox Game Pass, then you're like, oh, damn, you know? Because I, I, yep. I bought, actually, I got for Christmas um, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm -hmm. It's on Xbox Game Pass now. So it's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Ouch. But And then Deathloop, yeah. you know, Deathloop, I got that, and it'll be on Xbox Game Pass in a few months. But, you know, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm, I've always been a PlayStation guy. So yeah. it's like, I love playing my single-player narratives there, and I don't care if I have to pay a little bit of money here and there, whatever. Right, yep. <clears throat> Let's see. So a little bit of background on Ghostwire Tokyo. It is an upcoming action-adventure video game developed by Tango Gameworks. It is published by Bethesda Softworks. Um, originally set to come out March 22nd, the game got delayed a little bit due to the departure of their creative director, Nakamura. But, much to the relief of anticipating fans, Shinji Mikami, the creative director of other games such as The Evil Within, has taken over as overall executive producer for Ghostwire. Um, while Kenji Kimura is serving as um, a director. From what we've seen from the trailers, this game looks really action-packed and apparently has a pretty decent map to explore. It's not going to be like super open world, um, but it's going to be big enough, I guess. Yeah. Um, there's been a couple things um, that some people have been saying um, about it, you know, mixed feelings and stuff like that. Um, graphics look really, really good. Um, the trailer itself, it showcases a variety of monsters and powers. Um, those are used by the protagonist, and his name is Akito, I believe. Um, like I said, it's it's somewhat open-ended um, with their level design. Um, he uses power-ups and stuff to warp to buildings, um, up to buildings, down to the street level. Um, so I feel like this is going to be a really, really interesting game, and it's something that I might like, um, and I can't wait to hear everybody else's opinions on it. But other than that, I think that's about it for my stories. Yeah, I, um, I've heard a little bit about it. I've listened to some podcasts that, you know, they've gotten the game early. A lot of the, you know, industry insiders and journalists, and don't worry, we'll get there one day. In about 15 to 20 years, we'll be there. But, um, yeah. you know, they, um, they got the game early to, you know, do a, a preview. They can't really go, they, they were only allowed to play the first two chapters. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of them are saying that it is a huge game. Like, there's so many side missions that the first two chapters took them almost 10 hours you know so if you are someone that likes to do a lot of side missions and you know complete a game 100 percent, this is a game for you for sure um and there, there like you said there are a lot of mixed reviews um there's people that gave again they're only allowed to talk about the first two chapters right now until the embargo's up but you know there's some that are saying yeah it's a good game you know six out of seven seven i mean six out of ten seven out of ten and then there's some that are saying man this is an eight out of ten you know nine out of ten um, so I guess it really all depends if it's your style of game. Um, a lot of people are saying it feels like a first-person shooter, which is kind of cool, you know, except, you know, you don't have a gun. You got these powers that you have. But, yeah, I'm actually uh, looking forward to playing it. It probably won't be a day one for me either, but I'm definitely looking forward to uh, checking it out sometime. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> but our last story isn't so much a story, but more so a conversation. Brian, have you seen the uh, Steam Deck? You know, the portable PC, essentially. I've 
only seen it in commercials, and I've seen them play some games like Breath of the Wild. Um, so that's really interesting that uh, I guess a PC type thing could be able yeah. to play like Switch games and stuff like that. Yeah. So the Steam Deck itself, if they're playing Breath of the Wild, it's um, probably um, hacked or modded because it's Nintendo didn't give them the rights to like you know play. Uh, a Steam or play Nintendo games on a Steam Deck on a, per okay, se. Yeah, yeah, but um, so it it's kind of cool, man. I'm actually thinking about getting one. They are still releasing them um, quarterly, so I didn't pre-order one. Um, but you know, one of the things I saw online is you know a, an article that's written by Mike Andrew Nico from CNN. He said the who, what, and how. So. Who is the Steam Deck for? The Steam Deck is ideal for two groups of people. The PC gamers who own lots of games on Steam and want a convenient way to play them on the go, and folks looking to get into PC gaming without shelling out $1,000 or more on a gaming PC. Um, that seems like me. You know, I just literally, I haven't been into PCs or laptops in a long time. Like, I have a Chromebook. That was, that was the most I've had as far as um, a laptop goes. You know what I mean? Um, right. And just recently, I bought the laptop that's sitting in front of me because, you know, we all wanted to start this podcast. I needed something a little bit more powerful that can run actual games and stuff like that. So um, it is a gaming laptop. So we'll see if I can actually, you know, do something with it one of these days. But right now, it's mainly just a pod podcast laptop. But um, so what do you need to know? The Steam Deck is a handheld gaming PC designed to play the tens of thousands of games in the Steam marketplace at fairly respectable settings. It's also a full on Linux computer with a desktop, mo desk desktop mode can't speak um, that you can use to run apps and browse the web. It delivers a pretty great portable PC gaming experience, though its battery life isn't very good for demanding titles and not all games on Steam are optimized or compatible. Um, if what games would you, you know, if you had a Steam Deck, you know, what would you look forward to playing on there as far as, you know, handheld games? I know it's a loaded question, you know, and there's thousands of games that you can play. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm honestly not too sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I really can't. Um, I mean, maybe some like retro classics and stuff like that that you could just kind of download. Yeah. Um, download. Like I do um, emulate quite a bit on okay. my um, PC myself, uh, so I do get some like older games and I do play them off of like a uh, some like GBA or something like that emulator. Yeah. Um, so being able to actually have access to that and carry it with me everywhere, um, so I can kind of play those games, that would be that would be kind of dope. Yeah. Um, so that's probably something that I would download for it. Yeah, personally, I know a lot of um, people, they have a lot of, um, they get really great deals on games on Steam. Like they have like these bundles and again, I'm not too familiar with it, but you can get like a bundle of seven games for like $17 or um, there's some they're called Humble Bundles and you can get like an all three or all four or all five um, Tomb Raider games for like $10, you know? That's yeah. something that I would definitely do you know for games that i haven't played maybe a ps4 game or an old xbox 360 game if i can download it on the steam deck and play it on the go that would be great you know and that's kind of how i use my switch too i play a lot of games that are remastered and re-released on the switch and i'm just sitting in bed play it for a half hour 45 minutes and then you know go to sleep so that's probably how i would use my steam deck and i think i definitely will get one eventually um in 10 to 15 years when valve sends me the steam deck 4 to review for free um you know, yeah you gotta speak it into existence bro you gotta speak it into existence oh, yeah. <laughs> and then um john writes how does it compare valve's portable gaming rig is much larger and more powerful than the nintendo switch Packing a custom AMD processor that allows it to run graphically rich games at settings comparable to what you see on a PS4. That's not bad. Xbox One or cheap gaming rig. Its battery life generally isn't as long as the Switch is based on our testing. Likely because the Steam Deck draws more power it can run higher end games. And while not all Steam games are fully optimized for Steam Deck just yet, it has the advantage of having a larger library than just about any console. Just note that it's not explicitly designed for non-Steam games, such as the ones you'll find on Xbox Game Pass and the Epic Games Store. 
Um, I will say I did read an article, I think it was yesterday, that Xbox Game Pass is going to come to the Steam Deck. And that's another big thing. Like, I have Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, which means I have access to games on Steam Deck already. Um, So I can possibly be playing Forza Horizon 5, you know, Halo Infinite, things like that on my Steam Deck. So that that actually excites me. That will literally be my Xbox handheld. You know, it it would be my PS Vita, but for the Xbox. So, man, you know, it's... Now I think I'm t- starting to talk myself into it. <laughs> so, but. Yeah, it's uh, it'd be it'd be I mean aside from a handheld, that'd be a pretty husky handheld. Yeah, yeah. That's I for mean, sure. opposed to what the the Vita or the PSP was, which I definitely think they should come back with those. those oh newer, man, I actually have my Vita. Let me see. Can you see it here behind me? Um, let me see. Hold on, hold on. Right here, right here is my Vita. Yep. There it is. It's my Vita. I got my PSP right beside there. Uh, I've got my Vita TV there as well. But yeah, my Vita actually is probably the only thing that gets played behind me. Um, yeah, yeah. I would probably say my Vita is the only thing that gets played behind me because I have such a huge library for that that I'm still you know, playing through. Yeah. Right now I'm playing through Killzone Mercenaries. That game actually looks amazing on the Vita. But I digress. Um, Angel in the chat says, what's the price of the Steam Deck? I believe, um, let me look it up here, but uh, I believe it starts at $400 for the base. So $399. For the $399 features a 64 gigabyte eMMC internal drive. Um, It comes with a carrying case. The next highest price model costs $529 and trades in the eMMC drive for a 256 gigabyte NVMe SSD internal drive and I believe and it also comes with the carrying case um, I'm not sure if that might just oh so then the most expensive model will run buyers $649 and offers a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD internal drive um, by choosing the highest end Steam Deck buyers will enjoy the fastest storage and premium anti-glare etched glass. So you get a different type of glass on there too. Um, as well as an exclusive carry case and Steam Community Profile Bundle and a virtual keyboard theme. So that is actually, he said it's not bad. I agree for 650 man, you have a PC in your hands. You know, even the $400 one, it's like the Nintendo Switch OLED is 350 You know what I mean? So for 400 bucks, you can get yourself a pretty decent Linux PC. And there is actually a dock that you can put it and then play it on your TV or just yeah. use it as a laptop or a computer, you know? Um, I know you can also download Windows onto it if you'd like, and it's, it, it does so much. Um, personally, I think if I do get it, you know how I am, and I got to get the best, so I'll probably get the 650, play it for 10 minutes, and probably never touch it again. But right, yeah, man, so... Um, that's a Steam Deck, man. I'm actually, I, I, I think I do want to get one one of these days. Um, you know, maybe we can all review it here on the channel. But that's that's going to be a ways away because if you didn't pre-order it, you're probably not going to see it until next year. So, and I know, I think an article came out saying that um, the Steam Deck Two is already in, <laughs> and you know they mm. already like talking about bringing out the Steam Deck Two at some point. So yeah, but yeah, man. Um, if you don't have anything else, you know. Those were the stories for today. I appreciate everybody tuning in. Again, you can catch us every week. Um, We're going to try and be more consistent with which day we come out with the uh, video game news. But you can catch us on twitch.tv slash the entertainment plaza if you want to watch it live. If you do not want to watch it live, you can catch us on youtube.com slash the entertainment plaza. And uh, shortly after, you can catch, catch us on all podcast services around the world. Just search for the entertainment plaza podcast for brian plaza i am moses de la joya jusino pedro santo gonzalez santiago plaza el segundo that is it for today (laughs) peace see you